Hi, I'm Brendan from So Cute Photo in Monterey. Today I'm gonna to go over Wacom tablets, the two I have and what all the buttons do. So I actually have two different Wacom tablets. The first one I got was the Wacom Intuos Pro, which is this guy. And then I have just the regular Wacom Intuos. Both are actually the small size. Here, let me do a little comparison. I'll show them next to each other. So they're actually both smalls, but the Pro has a lot more controls. I got this one first, and one of the things I love about it is that it actually has, um, you can do just hand gestures, so you don't need to use a trackpad or a mouse at all if you have the Pro. And it has more buttons and you can set more controls. So I used that first for a really long time um, when I edited at home on a desk, but then when I decided that it was more efficient for me to edit out of the house, I wanted something a lot smaller, so then I just got the regular small Intuos. And it's about half the size. So on your Wacom tablet, no matter which one you get, there are gonna be some buttons. Um, this one might be the most intimidating because you have a whole row of buttons and the touch wheel. And then on the smaller one, you have some buttons along the top. I'm gonna be really honest with you. I don't ever use the buttons. <laughs> but um, I know that people work in different ways and so setting up the buttons or at least knowing what they're capable of doing would be super helpful. So what we're gonna go over is what they natively do and kind of how you can customize them. So on your computer, you're gonna open up the Wacom tablet settings. You're gonna click on the functions and then that's gonna show you um, something called express keys which these are the express keys, the little buttons right here. And so for each express key, you can program what it does and it has a little drop down menu that will give you different options. So each one can control something specific. Um, you can have it, the possibilities are really endless. You can have it open an application, you can have it pull up a finder window, you can, um, Probably the most useful is to assign a key command uh, related to Photoshop. If you're using this for photo editing, that would probably be the most useful for you. So you can set it to have um, pull up a brush or a modifier, so like command, option, shift. Um, so you can set all of those. So those are all the little, these little buttons. Then in the middle, um, there's something called the touch ring. So what the touch ring does is you can, just like the buttons, you can set it to do different things and pull up different controls. So you can have it zoom in or zoom out as you kind of rotate around the wheel. You can have it make um, a brush bigger and smaller as you rotate around the wheel. And you can go into the Wacom tablet commands and choose what it does. And so, on here, there are four little dots. You can see that that one is lit up. So you can set the wheel to do four different functions. So right now I have, um, since it's this little dot, it's on the auto zoom. This one's set to a different keystroke and you can set each one to do a different option. And all you have to do is click this button. It will move the dot, which means it's doing a different function. So if you need to move the function around, so this one would make it so that I will zoom in and out. If I put it here, it's whatever keystroke I have it set to. And then I have a keystroke for this guy too. And if I move this all the way over here, it will, um, when, I, when I use my finger around here, it'll actually rotate the canvas in Photoshop. So you can set all of those to do whatever you want. So you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different options of keys to use on this guy. So this one's on the Pro. 
And then this one's just the regular one. You have two keys on either side of the power button. So two over here and two over here. And it's really super similar. You can go into your command, um, you can go into your Wacom tablet controls and click on there and you can set them to do whatever you want them to do to be different functions, to pull up different programs, or you can set them to different keystrokes. So for me, I have the, the things I do most often in Photoshop are going to involve brush and going to involve your clone. Um, and usually it's making the brush go bigger and smaller is what I always do, or changing in mask, changing the brush to black and white. So on my, on my keyboard, the keys I'm always hitting are the brackets, bracket back and forth to make a brush go bigger and smaller, and the X to switch from black to white, black to white. So on here for me, I have this, these guys to be the brackets, and this guy to be the X. So those are just some of the shortcuts you can use on the keys. So your Wacom tablet is gonna come with a pen. If you have the Pro, it's probably gonna be a little fatter. It's gonna look like this. Um, so it has the pen tip, it has two buttons, and then it also has an eraser. The eraser is really the only difference between the Pro pen and the regular pen. So just like on the tablet, you can, uh, you can set the buttons on the pen to be different key commands. Personally, I have the bottom set to right click. So it'll bring up my brush controls in Photoshop. And then I have the top button set to X so I can change the brush from white to black when I'm doing masks. And then you can actually use on the pro pen, you can use the eraser end to be an eraser. Um, especially if you're using mask, you can tip it over and, and erase. And it works just like the pen tip, it's just fatter. Um, I don't actually use it very often because I just change the, um, the X black and white to be, be an eraser for this tip and then I don't have to do that. But you know, whatever works for you, so you can give it a try. And then the regular pen is exactly the same. Um, it's a little skinnier. It doesn't have the eraser tip, but it does still have two um, buttons on the control. And again, you can set them to whatever you want. You can set them to be different commands, pull up different things. But I again use the bottom, um, the bottom as a right click and the top as the X control. So there's a little bit of a learning curve when it comes from moving from a mouse or a trackpad to the Wacom tablet. I can't tell you how many photographers I've seen in groups um, or heard in person that, you know, somebody bought them a tablet or they got one for Christmas or they splurged and got one because they were told that they were supposed to. And either it sat in the box because they didn't want to learn something new or they pulled it out of the box, used it for one day, got really frustrated and it went back in the box. Um, hands up, I was that also that photographer. <laughs> My husband, um, I when I started, I loved editing, I loved retouching, and he's like, why are you using a mouse? Um, so he bought me a Wacom tablet and a stylus and it sat in the box because I took it out once and got really frustrated and put it back in the box and put it away. One of the reasons I got super frustrated is because when you are so used to how, like for the most part, we're using the clone tool or the brush tool to use masks in Photoshop, right? When you're retouching. And one of the things is when you use a mouse or a trackpad, you are used to the brush staying the same size and pressure not mattering. It's always gonna be a solid line. So when you use the Wacom pen and it's, sense, it's um, pressure sensitive and you get different consistencies, different opacities, different thickness of the brush and you can't control it, it's super frustrating. Um, so what I ended up doing when I tried to tackle it again is I actually turned off the pressure controls um, for all the brushes. So, and that makes it like so much easier to learn. So I'll show you where that is in Photoshop. You select your brush and then you can go over up the top of the screen. There's a little, it looks like a pencil with a target. And if you hover over it, it'll say exactly what it does. It says always use, here, let me do it again. Always use pressure for size. So that means if that's on, 
that means it's pressure sensitive. So it's going to affect your pressure you put on the pen is going to affect the size of the brush. Now, I think you should turn that off. It makes getting used to this so much easier. So I'm gonna show you kind of also what that looks like. So I'm gonna draw a straight line with that off. So that's what you're used to normally. So the line is gonna be the exact same thickness and usually the same opacity depending on the brush from top to bottom. When the pressure controls are on, so let me click that guy on again. When you draw a line, you're gonna get thickness and thinness depending on how much pressure you put on the brush, which makes it a little harder to control and it's not as predictable, you're not used to it. So all you have to do is make sure that guy is off and then it will work just like your mouse will. And then you can do the same exact thing when you go into clone tool and make sure that same option at the top is also not selected. So I would give it, I don't even know, usually the learning curve, once you turn off the pressure controls is super easy. Like even give it a couple days and you'll be totally used to it. And once you're used to it, you can turn those controls back on if you want a little bit more flexibility. Um, or you can, I honest to God, like always have it off because I want it to always just work like a mouse because I'm not doing illustrations. I want to know exactly how thick and thin my lines are going to be. So that's what I use. So I always have it off. So I'm just going to quickly show you how easy it is to make a really intricate mask just using um, the Wacom tablet. I'm going to have, I have a photo pulled up here and I have a hue saturation layer in Photoshop. And so I'm going to change the color of the background and mask it off the baby. Um, and so you can follow along.